Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's time for us to go through the papers. As always, we have Okuna Bo who joins us uh, to share his thoughts on the big stories on the front pages of National Dailies. Okuna Bo Katara, good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning, Messi. Good morning, Messi. All right, then let's get straight to the business of the day. We start off with a punch newspaper this morning. On the punch, PDP orders panel to beg Wike and drops Okoa. Governor's loyalists insist. Ex-Vice President's prize for picking Okoa over Wike may not, may be to lose reps others. Rivers Governor, PDP's pillar, will beg him not to defeat, argues both chairman. So looking at the right here underneath the board caption, replacing Wike with Okora will create more crisis, says PDP Chieftains. And just before we move away from the punch, you have 165 litre fuel. Deport owners shown federal government's directive. Marketers give condition. IOC's divestment threat to Nigeria's oil sector. That's what the federal government is quoted to say. I mean, uh, when you consider the fact that these IOCs are divesting from Nigeria, what becomes of the entire economy is very dependent on oil. And 28 die in Ogun, Yobe road crash. Uh, this is according to the FRSC, cautions night travelers. Again, you also find another caption here saying, After a while, controversy surrounds 300 billion naira textile revival fund. Banks' assets, assets increases by 21% to 64.32 trillion naira, says the Central Bank of Nigeria. Nigerian adults with bank accounts hit 45%, according to the World Bank. And just before then, you have APC and PDP have failed or shown desires new hands. Uh, but some people are saying we didn't see that in a kitty. I mean, if we talk about the thought force, is that really going to be a thought force? Because that should be reflecting in the elections that are close to the 2023 elections. You don't need gun for self-defense, Adebo tells Christians. Nigerians or Nigeria now, like war zone, Methodist Archbishop lament and man said, send strange wife ablaze, burning woman grabs suspects, both die. Uh, Asu strike centers 140th day as Arab others lampoon the federal government. Gunmen abduct two a door Catholic priest and six a Nugun uh, resident. Uh, we move away from that. Uh, we also look at uh, another paper this morning on the punch. I beg your pardon, away from the punch, the Daily Independent newspaper. Applicant groaned as international passport scarcity hurts travel plans. Niger still prints document in Malaysia 15 years after. Wow. Are we really the giant of Africa? Corruption affecting printing document in Nigeria. That's what the source is quoted to say. But I thought we were very big on the fight against corruption. Amid high inflation... NGX posts best HI 22 turnover in five years. That's what it is. And passage of water resources bill plot to enslave Nigerians. So Tom is warning. Uh, we're talking about the governor of Benway State. 18 die in accident on Lagos Ibadan Express. Gunmen abduct two Catholic priests again in a door. Nigeria may lose its, democrac its democracy. I take that again. Nigeria loses democracy spoon or soon. Mm. IPAC is quoted to say Nigeria loses democracy soon. Uh, the chairman says threat against 2023 elections very, very known. NDLEA intercepts 4.5 billion naira heroin in baby food. PDP leaders move to avert seconders treatment of IU. I would do anything possible to unite party, says Atiko. 
And uh, uh, some of the headlines you find this morning on the Daily Independent. But we'll just quickly run through the Guardian newspaper this morning and the nation. And on the Guardian, stakeholders fear Lekki Seaport will replicate a Papa Pains. That's... Uh, Underneath, you find um, a caption saying infrastructure evacuation concerns undermine project's viability. Operator seeks government intervention on cargo evacuation system. Experts say uh, the fourth mainland bridge, Green Rail Line, will address concerns. Lagos to implement a master plan in six months involves stakeholders, says committee head. And just then, Igbo not ready for presidency, says Kwan Kwaso. Did you really say that? Coalition wants to nibble over the risks of losing Northern Christians. That's uh, 2023. Akwaibo APC chieftain denounces call for uh, the removal of Aine chairman, saying that's unfair. Time for prayers, not blame game. Jonathan, Vice President of Sibajo, uh, tells Nigerians. And just away from that, you also have the nation newspaper this morning. PDP crisis, article forecloses discussion on office sharing and standard bearer to meet wiki lead reconciliation process. 1.4 trillion recovered from debtors, says Amcon. St Stock exchange axes nine firms over poor governance and World Bank's 1 billion COVID-19 fund for poor nation. Two Catholic priests abducted in on those state. And away from that, you have 7,000... 70,000 ghost workers, MDA's directors face ICPC probe. Duty on imported pre-2013 vehicles uh, raises or increases by 120%. And there's an unfortunate incident, 18 die in Lagos, about an express night accident. Now, these are some of the headlines this morning on the Nation newspaper. We have Open the Bone Kataria, who joins the conversation this uh, morning. Okunabon uh, Katara, it's good to have you join us. Yeah, good morning. All right, let's start off with the Punch newspaper. PDP orders panel to beg Wike and drops of COA, or drop a COA, government's loyalists are insisting. What do you make of the um, saga that's going on, especially when the PDP is the opposition party? And we understand the role and the dynamics of an opposition party in any democratic dispens dispensation, if you like to put. Uh, yes, Messi. First, let us understand that politics um, <clears throat> is all about, it's a concentric circle of conspiracies and accumulated interest. The so called scheme in the party, as far as I'm concerned, has been orchestrated. The call for the removal of Tokoa uh, is high on the sound of the voices of weak supporters and their stealing, I say, stealing the adversity of their claims. To have a man who, for certain reasons, known and unknown, made a choice, and that choice is planned on his perception or his thinking that he will work with such a person. The truth is, nobody is going to uh, deny the fact that Governor Yes of Wiki has the political clout, he has the watches, financial and otherwise, and a lot of people believe that Wiki and an article and a Wiki will be uh, will give us what I refer to as political potentiation. But then I always tell people I said Wiki is consumed in the very smoky bell stuff. What do I mean by that? The standard bearer article will want somebody that will walk with him with his eyes closed when he goes to sleep. Don't forget that Governor Yeson Wiki has been made, or made snide comments before now, before the convention and so on. First, he said, um, making uh, snide comments in Wendell when he said it has nothing to do with 
founding fathers of the party, but those who sustained the party. He was obviously referring to Atiku. He also talked of a man who left the PDP, went to APC, contested, and now is back to the PDP. Such a man should not be trusted or voted for. He was making reference to Atiku. If you were Atiku, would you want such a man to be your vice president? I mean, let us be quite honest. And again, as far as I'm concerned, the so-called bifurcation in the PDP occasioned by the uh, emergence of Okowa as the vice president, to me, is being orchestrated, like I said, in order to mount pressure on the standard bearer and the party to drop Okowa. But that will be a dangerous move. It will suggest Makaba in the party, political Makaba. Because if you do that, then it goes to justify. Because one of the problems we have is that a lot of people see him as somebody that is predisposed to authoritarianism and has the predilection for combat, even when it is gratuitous. And so, if you succumb, capitulate to this pressure, then it definitely goes to confirm the fears of somebody like Atiku, even if he has refused to say it openly, that he will as a vice president could be a threat to his uh, presidency or to him as a president. A lot of people fail to appreciate and understand the fact that this pressure that is being mounted goes to confirm the fears of a lot of people. Let us even take me here for example. When in the first tenure, people suggested that Tati Janabugo should be his deputy governor. He refused. Bluntly refused. And he gave credit. And he came up with my sister, uh, uh, Balek Banigo. Harry, uh, yes. Dr. Uh, uh, Balek Banigo. And everybody accepted. Even the candidate of the PDP today, it is not as if it is a consensus. But people accept it. And so if the standard bearer of the party makes a choice and prefers A to B, why must you want him to change and choose you? I mean, what is the rationale? You are qualified. No doubt about that. You're, if you are the man that's a VP, definitely to send Chivas down the spines of a lot of Nigerians. We are not in any way in doubt of your ability and capability. But the man has made a choice. We must agree because he's the president. If that government fails or succeeds, he takes the credit or the blame. He wants somebody that, even in his uh, speech, he said he wants somebody that could take over from him and somebody that is presidential. That's why the weekend was consumed in the very smoky bellstone. As, a, as a, a governor and a presidential candidate. The conduct in public is extremely important because in politics, public perception rating and public perception index are crucial. Open a bar, You don't go to a church to say talk and fire you. You don't go to, you don't, you, even the issue of, uh, 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 what is his name, uh, 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 this house of, house of uh, rest member that was found at Google. A lot of people believe that it is because he's been victimized because of his ambition, his gubernatorial ambition. You see, the world is watching because you have much more where you're doing and gone beyond River State where you have the control. Beyond River State, you don't have the control. What's the truth about it? People are watching. When you talk and you abuse the parents, uh, uh, somebody criticizes you and you go to abuse his wife, his children, his mother, his father, the world is watching. Okay, but... Um, so, these uh, are all the issues that are taken into consideration in the selection of the candidate. 
or the running mate. But um, the, the question here is, should the PDP not, um, I mean, at this point in time, should the PDP be going through what they're going through? Shouldn't they have uh, put your acts together? The knowing that they are, the uh, knowing that they are, they are, they are I, I mean, I it's an opposition. I mean, they probably would have sorted out who becomes, you know, the presidential candidate and who becomes the vice president. I mean, that should have been sorted out as an opposition. Mercy. Like I, I said, I am not a member of this, I am not a member of this. So whenever I speak, I speak honestly. My analysis are unbiased. PDP, as far as I'm concerned, would have been done with this issue of presidency and vice presidency based on the interests of a microscopic few. Those who want to force their choice and the party. That is just the problem. Otherwise, I don't see why we should have this whole Ferrari and all this whole Abalu. Why? They are done. But you want to push. And if the party allows that, like I said, if the party should allow that, it would be very unfortunate. Let those who lost accept their faith. He has said that as painful as it is, they will still work for the success of the PDP. That is commendable. But his aficionados, his loyalists, for some personal interest, are the ones pushing this thing, are the ones fomenting this problem in the past. That is what is going on. But I would, I would have, what I expected of him was to call on them to stop and work come together to ensure how to how how the PDP will become successful in the first general, coming general elections. He should. Otherwise, it will be interpreted to mean he's the one stoking it secretly. He should come on, make it, make, address the press and say, listen, I don't want this anymore. Everybody stop. His choice has been made. Let's work towards the success of the party. It's as simple as that. All right. Um Open up on Qatar. Let's let's move away from that. Uh, so we're able to look at all the issues, big stories this morning, on the pages of our papers. Now, still on uh, the Punch newspaper, it talks about uh, IOC's divestment and threat to Nigeria's oil sector. The federal government is saying, you know, the reason, I mean, the fact that you have international uh, oil companies moving away from uh, Nigeria oil and gas sector as a threat to the industry. Do you see this beyond a threat to the industry or a threat to uh, the Nigerian economy? I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get that, sorry. So the divestment, you have international oil companies divesting from Nigeria, I mean, moving away from the Nigerian oil and gas sector. And the federal government sees this divestment as a threat. Let's not forget that, you know, there's also an agenda of moving from uh, the fossil fuel to clean energy. A lot of countries are talking about uh, the non-use of fuel and what have you. And so uh, you have some of these companies who are understanding the times and are moving away. Now, the Nigerian government is saying that this is actually a threat to the um, industry. We're talking about the oil and gas industry and asking that, you know, individuals, this is a time where you also have, uh, you know, locals taking up the challenge, uh, daring them to take up the challenge to, you know, fill in the gap. But the question here is, should we feel threatened? Is this just a threat to the industry or is it just a threat also? It's also a threat to the entire economy because we're overly dependent on oil and what comes out from oil. Well, I'm not an energy expert, but um, I don't see how it's a threat if you have people that will succeed those that are divested. You know, because it's all about the market. The problem we have in this country is that we are stereotyped. Our leaders are stereotyped. Uh, they are used to a particular process. They are used to a particular condition. They are not with particular condition. And so whenever there is a change, you feel threatened. Like you already said, I mean, the world has moved on, or is moving on. Let me not say has moved on. It's moving on. A lot of people are moving from this fossil fuel to, uh, what is this other one called again? Uh, what's that? Uh, I don't know what's wrong with my memory this one. Clean energy. But whatever I said, 
I could maybe I didn't sleep well. But, but whatever it is, the fact is this. You have those that are succeeding, those that are divested. So how is it different? It's not a threat to the economy. It's going to open up the economy. Is it because the, it is being controlled by the federal government? And they make a lot of money. It's a money economy. They make a lot of money from it, so they feel threatened. Because if it is being controlled by individuals, of course the federal government is not going to make as much as because it's only going to pay taxes to the federal government. From it that point, they feel threatened. It's not a threat as far as I'm concerned. Because you opened up the sector, you created jobs, and once it's a private sector, of course it will be more efficient. Probably we might not even have the problems we're having today with petroleum products. There's a scarcity of uh, uh, adulterated one time to go for. Because to take over a businessman, I will not want to do anything that will stimulate their progress. So I don't see that as a threat. It's just that we have leaders that are rudderless, stereotyped. And so once there's a minor change in anything, they feel threatened, incapable, and incompetent. That is just the problem. No, but, but um, Okunabon Katari, as much as you're saying that Nigerians should not consider this as a threat, uh, you know, we should, we should see this as an opportunity where we have locals, and we're talking about local producers now, taking advantage of this divestment and, you know, doing so much. But have we really also considered the reason for this divestment, the insecurity, all the issues? I mean, uh, the hostility. The, the condition of working and the fact that most importantly is that these persons are already seeing in the future where's the market for oil the market for oil is it's fizzling out i mean it's going away that's why i said i said it has really not so so so, so, so how, how does that become because at the end of the day if you have people who are saying this persons have been here and we understand the politics and dynamics that's been going on with this person in the system and then you also have them moving away for several reasons. And the fact that, I mean, if there's no Messi, market for Messi, this. Messi. So, and then uh, we're saying that we Messi, have locals Messi, who Messi. should be very proud of saying we're taking over. Where, where do you I, now I find had, the market? Who, who I, then I buys question. the oil? Oh, I had your question. For security reasons, yes. But the truth about it is that, like I said, that's why Nigerians will always plan what for diversification. You have agriculture. You have other things that will bring in and bring in money for the country. You see, the truth about it is that even those that are going to succeed, take over from those that are invest, what, what are they going to do? Are they not going to sell? To who? Are they going to consume all? Are they going to consume all? They are not going to consume all. Yes, we agree. A lot of people are coming and living for security reasons. No problem. But the problem is, the issue is, as they are living, as they living with the oil, it's not as if they don't want the oil anymore. That's not the issue. But they are not safe to remain there to explore. So if they go, we are going to explore and still send out. That's not something that's I don't know why that's the, that's the problem. But you have a government that is rudderless. A government that is used to a particular system. We own the oil. We are going to explore. We are going to send our export. And we are going to end the revenue. It's as if the Nigerians that are going to do that will still export this, this product. No, and no. um, um, open, up, open up on Qataria. Amongst yes. the issues that have been mentioned, I mean, the reason why you have this company's divesting or uh, this movement, insecurity, if you want to put, other issues and all of that the fact that the, the people are already seeing ahead we, we you have also agreed to the fact that the world is moving away from the use of fuel the market is reducing why are we still even asking that oh we should encourage local producers we're not even thinking that the world is moving away from us and we're very dependent on the that. use of oil so what becomes Maybe of us I if you don't have that. a market Messi, I answered that when I said we are talking about diversification, that's why we've been clamoring for diversification. I answered all those things. You know that I answered all your questions in one, maybe probably one sentence. You know, like I said, the government is stereotyped, it's used to a particular system, and so it feels threatened because the world is changing, it's moving on. 
That's what I tell you. Don't be a rural government. Any government that is competent and any government that sees the future has a gift of clever. Any government that plans will not even feel threatened by this. That's the point I'm making. But we feel threatened because we fail to prepare for the future. And that's what we're telling. Every small thing with the oil industry, oh, Nigeria uses that as an excuse. You don't have to go today, they say you create a rap war. But under that war of Bavagina, that was what we had the week for. So the bottom line is this lack of focus, lack of planning. It's as simple as that. And that's why we are threatened whenever the oil market is affected, whenever the oil market is mentioned, Nigeria is threatened. Because we have failed to plan, we have failed to forecast, we have failed. To, to, to look into our into the future. We just depend on what the old system, the oil, what we are going to get from it, and that is it. And I will still be checking. That's the point I'm making. It boils down to our leaders, the incompetence on the part of our leaders. Quickly, Okunabo and Kateri, as we, um, you know, bring this to an end, let's look at the daily that independence. Not, that does not mean <laughs> the security situation, of course, we all know what the security situation is in this country, and we all know the effects. No doubt about that. Um, but let's quickly look at this one. Nigeria still prints document. We're talking about international passports in Malaysia. 15 years and counting. W yes, what exactly yes. is the issue? I mean, is it rocket science? Can't we have all of this printed in Nigeria? Do we lack the materials, the resources, uh, the, the people, the, the technical know-how to achieve all of this? Why do we still have to... We don't lack the material, we don't lack the resources. What we lack is credibility and transparency. I don't know why people are worried that we are printing... Uh, what is it called? Because it's uh, becoming... The, 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 reason, the reason why Nigerians I'm are worried I'm, is because it's not available. I'm, it's becoming scarce. Don't worry, I'm responding. All right, then. I'm responding. I heard it clearly. I don't know why people are worried that we are still printed in Malaysia or wherever. They shouldn't be worried. After all, if our president can leave our country for printing on medical grounds, is it passports? It has nothing to do, it has to do with sincerity, will, credibility, and transparency. A lot of people are making money from that. It's as simple as that. But, but, A lot of people are making money. Not because we cannot do it. We have the resources. We have the the dough that we have, we have the, the capability. We have it. But no, if you do that, it is going to rob certain persons of their fortunes. And that is why they have to bring to end forex and whatever. Otherwise we can't do it here. But I don't know why people are worried when you have anomaly in this country. The country itself is not I'm not, it's, it's, it's not in order. So, whenever you have a disorder, I don't know why she surprised me. When you have a president for seven years who leave a country, his own country, to UK for treatment. Even as well, really, his own wife was the one who said the Asura well, Play is a prescription center. His wife. Yeah, you are talking about passport. The idea about that. They, they, they have a uh, diplomatic passport, so I don't bother. They don't have a problem. The common man to hell with the common man. Those are the bottom of the pecking order. To hell, whatever you want to do, that's your bloody business. Uh, We're comfortable. That is, the, that is the style. That is the attitude of our leaders. All right. You can cry from now to tomorrow, and they are not bothered. Open up on Qatar. Yeah. We, we, we have to go now. This will have this has a major effect on the economy because when you cannot travel out, and your, your businesses outside are, are affected. It affects the economy, it affects the income. Even health and health, and health and we don't have a medical centers here anymore. We do, we do have. Uh, uh, Nabon, Qatar, that, 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 that would be, that would be uh, um, you know, very.
fallacious if you want to say. I mean, a lot of fallacy there. We do have hospitals. We do have medical centers. As, as a matter of fact. I'm not, I, 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 I will talk. We're talking about quality. Especially you know, so, so there are two different things. There are two, but we have the structures here. But that might not be functioning doesn't mean we don't have them. Okuna Bankatara, we have to go now because we're out of time. Unfortunately, we really didn't have so much time to go through. All right, thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. Yes. Okuna Bankatara. What you mean is that the government is useless. That's what you mean. We need to go now. Uh, thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. I mean, we look forward to having uh, you share your thoughts on the issue. You too. Right. Thank you so much. Open up on Qatar as a public affairs analyst, and we definitely come with the newspaper review tomorrow. Let's take a breakdown. When we return, Kwan Kwaso offers Peter Obi a vice presidential ticket. Is that going to be a thought for us in 2023? Stay with us.